So Hemholtz coils are coiled, two coils with the same number of turns on them. This, these have 500 turns on them, each coil. And <clears throat> they're a particular distance apart. If you take the diameter of this from center of the coil to center of the coil, it's 21 centimeters. So the radius is 10 and a half. And these coils, in order for it to be good Hemholtz coils, have to be at 10 and a half, the same as the radius of the coil, the separation of the coils are 10 and a half centimeters. So we're going to look, the reason you use Hemholtz coils is to make a uniform magnetic field in the center here. So you can do experiments in here. That's for next time. <laughs> Today we're just going to measure uh, that field all the way along the, the center axis of this. And what I've got is a smart cart with a, a wireless magnetic field sensor on it. Um, it's just sitting on it. <laughs> so it happens to come out to be just the right height so that I'm going down the center of the coil with the track in this position. So I can keep track of my magnetic field with this magnetic field sensor, and I keep track of the position of the cart to know where that magnetic field sensor is. Now, in order to make it be in, uh, zero in the middle here for, for zero position so that my coils are centered around a reference frame of zero here, I'm going to line up the end of the magnetic field sensor <clears throat> with the center of the coils the best I can, right where the sensor is. Say when. Uh, yeah, that's the best I can do. Okay, so that should be zero. Now, that's the nice thing about it is that in the software, you can tell the software. I don't want it to zero again, the smart cart to zero again when you start recording. I haven't started recording yet, but it already knows where we set the zero. So we're going to leave that zero on, <clears throat> and then I'm just going to roll the cart through and plot the magnetic field versus position. Guess what? There's a magnet in the end of my. Uh, I should. Well, you, you I, turn the current on. <laughs> well, that's perfect. <laughs> it shows there's no no field because <laughs> I didn't actually put any current through the coils. Thank you. Yeah, okay. Did you move your? Uh, <laughs> no, no, I'm sensor? no, I'm good. <laughs> you you want to? You want to start it this time? Hit record for me. <laughs> okay. So this time on. I'm going to turn the current on. And I'm putting about half an amp through it. Okay, it's, it's running. Go ahead. So getting something this time? Yeah. Or, <laughs> yeah. So I should have stopped it before it got to the end here. Um, but, <clears throat> and I didn't quite have it centered right because my. Uh, Curve is not uh, the uh, the curve is not centered on zero, but that's okay. It's close enough. So the the coils are actually positioned about here and here, uh, and the addition of the two fields makes it be quite uniform. So as the field drops off from this coil, the other field is increasing from this coil. So the two add up to be just a constant value through the center. So this, this flat top is where the center, the center area of the coils are. Now, <clears throat> the, the equation for Hemmelt's coils is as a function of the x 
position through here is given a, in this complicated equation right here, which I have put into the calculator in capstone. So I'm going to add that calculation here to this. Come on. Here's the, th here's the theoretical curve. And let me change the, the color here. I'll make it red. So there you see the theoretical curve and is in red, and the actual curve is in blue, and they match really well. And uh, I didn't compensate for any of anything here. This is actual measurements. Um, if I had zeroed correctly, they would have been lined right up on each other. So let's go on just one step further. I'm going to take this and move the coil so that it's the wrong separation. Instead of being at 10 and a half, I'm going to put it at about 20 centimeters. There's actually a set screw down there that I could loosen to do this better. <laughs> no. <laughs> I can't reach it. You sure? How far? I'll keep going. That's good enough. So let me just put this back so that it, the coils are centered on the approximately the same place they were before. And now, current's still on. Let's record this one. So there you see that the the coils are too far apart, so that when the one the magnetic field from this coil is dropping off, the magnetic field from this coil haven't picked up enough to compensate, so it doesn't fill that in and make it constant in the middle. I also have the formula, which is for any distance that you like to have the coils apart, the distance d is the separation of the coils, and I can add that in here. I think I had it in the calculator for 20 centimeters, but let me see. Yeah, there's the 20 centimeters. We're not quite 20 centimeters apart here. We're only at 16. Let me change the calculation to 16. There. Oh, see, it matches it very well. So we've shown you today a lot of ways to use smart carts for things that they never were intended to be used for. <laughs> <laughs> but they work out very perfectly. And, and, and what you really did nicely with there is that uh, you used the Hemholtz coils, but I bet you could do a whole bunch of stuff with Hemholtz coils, yeah? What, oh, yes. What are, the, what are the great things you can yeah, do with that? That's the, that? The whole reason for it is to, to have a uniform field so that then you can put things in here and see how much torque you have on a magnet and things mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, of course, you can just use a single coil if you want to do other experiments as well. And these are available? If people wanted those experiments, could they find them? Yeah. They're what? in our library. In our Thank library. You. Right. Thank you, Anne. So, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, Anne Hanks and the Hemholt Coils. Very nicely done. And so